Hi, welcome back. Today we are discussing routing. The Angular router is a core part of Angular platform. It enables developers to build single page applications with multiple views and allow navigation between these views. We can compare routing of our applications with navigating a plane. Pilot sets the flight coordinates, in our case route path, and the plane lands on the desired location or desired page in our app. Oftentimes, planes carry goods or cargo, and routes carry params info and data. And unfortunately, some planes do get crashed or lost, and for routes sometimes we get 404. To use the Angular router, an application needs to have at least two components so that it can navigate from one to other. To create a component using the CLI, enter the following at the command line, where first is the name of your component. ng generate component first. Repeat this step for a second component, but give it a different name. Here the new name is second. This guide works with a CLI generated Angular application. If you are working manually, make sure that you have base href with slash in the head of your index.html file. This assumes that the app folder is the application root and that uses slash. Create a new module for routing. Name it app-routing.module. Define const routes, which is type of routes. Here we will define our paths and components. Inside ng module imports array, add router module and call for root module with routes passed as argument. Then export your router module so it can be imported into the root module. At the end define the app routing module class. Import the app routing module into app module and add it to the imports array. Now, define your routes in your routes array. Each route in this array is a JavaScript object that contains two properties. The first property, path, defines the URL path for the route. The second property, component, defines the component that Angular should use for the corresponding path. Now that you have defined your routes, you can add them to your application. First, add links to the two components. Assign the anchor tag that you want to add the route to the router link attribute. Set the value of the attribute to the component to show when a user clicks on each link. Next, update your component template to include router outlet. This element informs Angular to update the application view with the component for the selected route. You can add router link active attribute if you want to style active link. One note, the order of routes is important because the router uses a first match win strategy when matching routes, so more specific routes should be placed above less specific routes. Often, as a user navigates your application, you want to pass information from one component to another. To do so, you use the activated route interface. First, import router, activate a route and param map to your component. Inject an instance of activated route by adding it to your application's constructor. Update the ngOnInit method to access the activated route and track the ID parameter. Now we need to adjust our routes to pass the ID param as well. In path, add semicolon and name of your parameter. And then we can add ID values to our links.
That's how you pass and retrieve data from one component to another. A well-functioning application should gracefully handle when user attempts to navigate to a part of your application that doesn't exist. To add this functionality to your application, you set up a wildcard route. The Angular route selects this route anytime the requested URL doesn't match any router paths. To set up a wildcard route, add the following code to your route's definition. For the component property, you can define any component in your application. Common choices include an application-specific page not found component, but here I'm just redirecting to the first component. And now, if you navigate to any random path, it will always give us first component. As your application grows more complex, you may want to create routes that are relative to the component other than your route component. These types of nested routes are called child routes. This means you're adding a second router outlet to your app because it is in addition to the router outlet in app component. In this example, there are two additional child components, child A and child B. Here, first component has its own nav and a second router outlet in addition to the one in app component. Also, I'm going to create two child routes with the router links of child A and child B. And give it a second router link. Now, I'll create two additional components with Angular CLI and name their child A component and child B component. A child route is like any other route, in that it needs both a path and a component. The one difference is that you place child routes in a children array within the parent route. Now, if we navigate to any of child routes, we get the corresponding child component. Use route guards to prevent users from navigating to parts of an application without authorization. The following route guards are available in Angular. Can activate, can activate child, can deactivate, resolve, and can load. Create a service for your guard. ng generate guard your guard. In your guard class, implement the guard you want to use. The following example uses can activate to guard the route. Now, depending on your logic, it can return true or false. Usually it checks if the user is logged in or does he have privileges to access the page. In your routing module, use the appropriate property in your route's configuration. Here, can activate tells the router to mediate navigation to this particular route. Now, if we set the guard to false, we can't access the route, otherwise we can. And that's all today I wanted to discuss about the routes. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any new uploads. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos and I see you guys in the next video. Bye.